All right. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Nora Bloom. I'm here with Travel Leaders, and I want to introduce Scott Newcomb from Holland America. He's going to be talking to us today about Holland America, about cruising now in this new world environment, and, and also about Alaska, which we were just chatting about. So I want to thank you all for joining. If you do have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the Q&A or the chat, and I will monitor that for you, Scott. But I'm going to turn it over to you, and thank you all for joining. Absolutely. Thank you, Nora. Thank you, everyone, for being here. So give me just one moment while I share my screen, and we'll get started. All right. Looks good. All right, perfect. I was going to ask you. Thank you so much. Well, again, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, so excited to be here and tell you a little bit about how in America, how returning to cruising, which is so exciting. And then specifically, we're going to focus uh, a little bit on Alaska. I'll also give you a little bit of a teaser on some of our other top products at the end of this and our promotions. But uh, that's what we're going to focus on. And uh, we're just so thrilled to be back. You know, this last year was the first year back to cruising in quite a while. And uh, people have just been raving about all their experiences. And we're seeing in 2022, uh, the sales are fantastic. People are excited to get back to cruising and doing what they love. So when you're thinking about traveling yourself and cruising, um, I wanted to ask, you know, why, why how America might be the one for you. And I would say, would you consider yourself an explorer a foodie or a music lover? If so, Holland America would probably be a fantastic cruise line for you. We also have phenomenal renowned service, beautiful, timeless ship design. But if you're uh, thinking about what type of cruise it is and the type of people we appeal to, it is for explorers, foodies, and music lovers. So what I like to start out talking about is uh, one of my favorites is the food. So if you've ever been on a Holland America cruise or you know anybody who's been on a Holland America cruise, I'm sure they will tell you we have phenomenal cuisine on board our ships. We can say this in large part because of our celebrity uh, council made up of seven celebrity chefs. You've probably seen them on many of the TV shows, Iron Chef, Chopped, uh, Jacques Torres is on Nailed It, popular show on uh, Netflix as well. And so these fantastic chefs uh, design our breakfast, lunch, and dinner on board our ships. It doesn't stop just at the food from America, but also the drinks as well. James Suckling is a very famous wine enthusiast throughout the world, and he picks our wines. And Dale DeGroff is known as the king of cocktails. He designs all of our cocktails and mixed drinks on board. We also have a ton of uh, culinary experiences and opportunities on board our ships. One of them on board some of our newest ships, our pinnacle class ships, is called Glen. And so the, you see that in the bottom right hand corner. That is a partnership with one of my favorite wineries, Chateau St. Michel, uh, and it's such a cool experience. You see the barrels on the right-hand side. You can actually uh, mix your own blend of wine. Have it right there at the table if you want, or you can even bottle it up and uh, bring it home to share with your friends and family. When it comes to Holland America, where I think we really separate ourselves these days, though, is in entertainment, and specifically when it comes to live music. So about five years ago, we instilled something called the Music Walk, and it is just tremendously popular with our guests. It is so much fun. It's a bunch of live music venues uh, on board our ships. And that is in addition to our nightly show. So we still have a big uh, performance on our world stage like you would uh, think on most cruise ships. But in addition to that, we have nightly uh, live music performances at these different venues. So Lincoln Center Stage is classical music. And uh, many of these people have actually graduated from Juilliard. So with our live music, these are not just quote unquote uh, cruise ship musicians. They are the best of the best. B.B. King's Blues Club, that's often the most popular for our guests and a very, very high energy, fun show. We get these people again directly from the B.B. King's Blues Clubs throughout the world. Billboard on board is the Dueling Pianos and the Rolling Stone Rock Room is on board our brand new ship, the Rotterdam and our other two Pinnacle class ships as well. So that is our, our brand new uh, music venue only on our newest ships. Again, this is an addition to our nightly shows on the world stage. So it could be kind of a theater style performance by the Step One Dance Company, or it could be BBC Earth in concert. And this is a very popular uh, feature for us and our guests. So we'll show basically a film of like a National Geographic style, a BBC Earth style um, film of the place that you're visiting. Could be Alaska showing the beautiful nature and wildlife 
And it's all going to be uh, in performance with a live symphony orchestra. So it's very kind of inspiring, powerful type of performance. For explorers, and what this means for us is all about immersing you into the destination. We have uh, premium medium sized ships. So a lot of ships these days, they just keep getting bigger and bigger. Oftentimes uh, over 5,000 passengers on board their uh, ships approaching even 6,000 guests. For Howl in America, our ships are between 1,400 to 2,600 guests on board our ships. And that medium-sized ship allows us to get into far more ports throughout the world. So it allows you to get deeper into the destination and have a really unique experience. In fact, we go to over 470 ports throughout the globe. That also goes for onboard our, our ships. We have something called Exploration Central. So we have the Exploration Central Cafe that's uh, up in the crow's nest where we have destinations experts. They'll tell you all about the destination you're visiting, help you to pick the perfect excursions for you. And we have a ton of different um, experiences on board our ship as well. It could be a port to table experience where we show you how to make a delicacy uh, of the area and have a, sh a chef come out and show you that type of thing and a variety of different excursions to get you deeper into that destination. Renowned service, this is really a staple of Holland America. Uh, it's a very uh, important part, part of our brand to have the best service on the seas. If you know anybody who's been on Holland America, I'm sure they will tell you it's amazing. You know, you'll see these people, your cabin stewards, maybe a handful of times uh, throughout your cruise and they'll remember your name. You go to the omelet station or a bar and they'll remember what you ordered. We have absolutely amazing uh, service and these people are very personalized offer personalized and over the top service to your guests. You also see this picture of the fresh flowers. Holland America actually spends uh, roughly $10,000 per week on fresh flowers throughout our ships. So it's those kind of personalized and lavish touches throughout our uh, cruise ships that really make us premium cruise line. And finally, our perfectly sized ships. So I mentioned uh, our ships carry between 1,400 to 2,600 guests in a world where cruise ships just keep getting larger and larger uh, and with five to 6,000 guests on their ships. This really makes a difference. We have larger cabin space for your guests. We have more, a higher uh, employee or crew to guest ratio for your guests as well. We also uh, feature wraparound decks that are amazing for nature viewing. That's especially important in Alaska. And then you see the uh, front of the ship there, the bow of the ship. We'll open that up for you in uh, several different destinations, including Glacier Bay National Park, to offer more space for your guests to view the nature and the destination around them. And lastly, I'll just point out here that uh, we do go to all seven continents, as I mentioned, uh, over 470 ports throughout the world, especially someplace in like Europe, you know, where your guests have maybe visited there before, but they want to see something a little bit different. Uh, perhaps a more unique itinerary than they've seen in the past. I definitely encourage you to take a look at Holland America because I think that uh, you will find a lot of uh, interesting itineraries that you wouldn't have thought of in the past. So I mentioned this before, actually, in fact, before we uh, got started with the recording, but with Holland America, we say we are Alaska. We have been going to Alaska for, this is our 75th anniversary, 75 years in Alaska. Um, we are, we've been going to Alaska longer than any other cruise line out there. And uh, we are the most awarded company for Alaska as well. You don't have to take my word for it though. Here are some of the many awards that we have received for Alaska. And you'll see some of these say 2019, 2020. Well, we haven't been cruising for a while. So uh, we will be excited to return to cruising uh, and winning a whole lot more awards moving forward. Now, when you are evaluating if uh, you'd like to go to Alaska with us, we explore Alaska in three different ways. Uh, you can experience it as a cruise only, as a land and sea journey. We're now calling this a cruise tour, which uh, includes the interior of Alaska and Denali. Or you can also go to the Yukon. And we are the only cruise line that offers experiences to the Yukon. Uh, which is just a phenomenal experience. If you have the extra time, I would definitely encourage you to check that out. Now, um, I was very excited and fortunate to cruise Alaska this last summer. It was one of the very first destinations that reopened to uh, the cruise lines, and we did 10 sailings. So we had kind of limited options, limited itineraries, 
But we did uh, this Alaskan Explorer itinerary, beautiful round trip, seven day sailing of Alaska and uh, was excited to be able to experience this myself. You'll see it goes round trip Seattle up to Juneau, Glacier Bay National Park, and then hit its highlights like uh, Sitka, Ketchikan and the Inside Passage before returning to Seattle. So I wanna to do today is share with you a little bit about my experiences on the cruise and then uh, tell you a little bit more about what the land portion of Alaska looks like with us as well. Now, oftentimes when people look at a cruise, they think about the destination they're going to visit and the different port stops. Well, really your, your experience um, you know, starts the second you step off the plane and that port town. So uh, when you're experiencing Alaska, that's going to start out in either Seattle and Vancouver. And uh, Seattle is a great place to start. It is such a fun city. Uh, it's known as the Emerald City and of course the largest city in the state of Washington. Pike Place Market was, was absolutely phenomenal. You're probably familiar with that. The, uh, you know, they throw around the fish with, and the fish market. There's tons of live music vendors, great bakeries and restaurants all throughout it. Tons of fun stuff to do there. And it is the birthplace of Starbucks. You see that picture in the upper right-hand corner. It turns out it's the, exactly the same as every other Starbucks, but with generally a much longer line. Absolutely stunning uh, nature and coastline in Seattle as well. Coming from the airport, see beautiful trees and forest all around, and then you get into the city and you see the coastline and it's just absolutely stunning. It's also one of the uh, best live music capitals within the United States as well. I did take all these pictures uh, in front of you and um, throughout these, the cruise that I'll show you here, I, I took most of these pictures. So that's the type of thing that you can expect to see when you visit as well. Then we're going to embark on the ship, and that's a question I get a lot. You know, what does what the embarkation look like these days? What are the COVID protocols to get on board the ship? So for Holland America, our guests must be uh, fully vaccinated, and that means getting your last shot at least 14 days before the cruise, and you do need to bring the actual uh, document with you. So you can't just bring a uh, photo on your phone or something like that. You do need to bring your vac vaccination document. Uh, we re recently added a few other protocols as well. So um, now you need to get a COVID test within two days prior to the sailing and show that negative test as you board. And we are requiring masks indoors as well. And so I've cruised several times in the last uh, six months on Helm America. And basically how this works is as you're walking around the hallways, you put your mask on. Um, but as you seat yourself or you're eating or you're outside, you can remove your mask. And so. Um, we, we were kind of had a deadline of where we had these protocols in place. We kept moving that back, but just with the state of things, we've now uh, placed those pro protocols uh, until further notice. So those will be around for, for at least the near future. So now we'll get back to the cruising piece and the, uh, the first port stop was the beautiful capital city of Juneau. And uh, as far as uh, port stops or city stops. This was my, my favorite uh, port stop for, uh, for this cruise I took anyways. It's absolutely stunning. The views in Juneau were unbelievable. You can take the uh, Gold Belt Tramway about 2,000 feet up Mount Roberts and get some beautiful views. In fact, I took that picture in the bottom right uh, from one of the hiking paths. And it's very leisurely. It's not uh, overly strenuous type of hiking, but just uh, some amazing views you can get up there. Don't forget about the culinary experiences in Alaska as well. Uh, think about you're right on the, in the sea there in beautiful uh, Alaska. You can get some fresh seafood and amazing crab as well. One of the uh, most famous places up there is Tracy's King Crab Shack. And so uh, that place is very, very popular. would certainly encourage you to check that out while in Juneau. And lastly, just nearby is Mendenhall Glacier. You see that in the bottom left. Uh, it's absolutely stunning. You can actually get very close to it as well. I took that picture from a little ways out so you can see the full glacier, but you can go all the way up to the coastline of that lake, beautiful lake to the right. There's this gorgeous waterfall and uh, tons of fun stuff to do in that area as well. You can do kayaking, whale watching is phenomenal in Juneau. So a lot of fun uh, excursions or activities to do in this area. Kind of the crown jewel of Alaska though is Glacier Bay National Park. And this is very important when you're evaluating who you want to see with, um, see Alaska with. So the Glacier Bay National Park, uh, most cruise lines can actually not even go into this national park. 
although it is one of the premier glacier viewing opportunities, not only in Alaska, but in the entire world. Of the other cruise lines that can visit Glacier Bay National Park, they have very, very limited permits and limited opportunities to actually go into the National Park. Because we've been going there so long, we've essentially been grandfathered into uh, the National Park and our relationship with Alaska allows us to have more permits and opportunities to have sailings in Glacier Bay than any other cruise line and more time in Glacier Bay National Park than any other cruise line as well. Our uncrowded ships, I mentioned this before, uh, just perfect for Alaska viewing. You can imagine, you know, when you see uh, a glacier or perhaps the calving of a glacier coming off a chunk of ice or perhaps a whale uh, or the beautiful wildlife on side, inside of the ship, people are gonna crowd those railings to see that type of view and get that perfect picture. So the last thing you want is to be fighting thousands more people uh, to do so. And finally, we also bring in national park rangers and Huna tribe members on board our ships uh, to provide their stories and insights and you can ask them all about the area. Here's some of the pictures I took while in the area on the left. That's the largest glacier within the national park. Uh, it's absolutely stunning, beautiful. It's called a Marjorie Glacier. And I actually saw uh, the calving of ice uh, five or six times while, while uh, right next to it. And I've been talking about Alaska for quite a few years now. Uh, and I had always heard when the ice cracks or a chunk of ice falls off, it sounds like rolling thunder. And it turns out that is exactly what it sounds like. I heard that noise, I turned around and, and right away saw a big chunk of ice fall off the glacier. And that's something in nature that's been there for thousands of years. And uh, you're one of the only people who see that instance in nature. So just a really interesting experience, um, something that's only in Alaska that you're gonna see something like that. So some beautiful views in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, you see Icy Strait Point. Uh, that's kind of a new stop for us and for different cruise lines. A uh, really beautiful, scenic, remote type of area. After going through Glacier Bay all day, then we'll uh, kind of go there in the evening and watch the sunset at uh, Icy Strait Point. Next up brings us to Sitka, and this is the uh, fishing capital of Alaska. Now, if you look in the upper right-hand picture there, if you look behind my head, you might uh, see a little something upon closer inspection. That is actually thousands and thousands of salmon swimming in the river behind me. Absolutely amazing sight to see. Never expected to see anything like that. I'm sure Nora did in her, in her time as they uh, seen the salmon. And it's a really, really beautiful type of sight and the wildlife you're gonna see in Alaska. Some of the things that you can uh, also do in Sitka, go to the Alaska Raptor Center, see the Birds of Prey. It's a rehabilitation center for uh, the Birds of Prey and Bald Eagles, or go see the bears at the Fortress of the Bear. Tons of uh, great nature stuff to do. Again, if you're interested in fishing, this is the best place to do that. And there's also a fantastic art scene in Sitka to visit the galleries, see some glass blowing, um, or do some painting classes. Our next stop brings us to Ketchikan, and this is the Native American capital or hub of Alaska. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the Native American heritage, we offer guided tours of the Saxman Totem Park, which has the largest collection of totem poles in the world. It's your last chance for doing kind of thrill-seeking adventures on this cruise and uh, doing things like zip lining, sport fishing, kayaking, canoeing. If you'd like a little bit more of a relaxing experience, you can definitely check out the great Alum uh, Alaskan Lumberjack Show. Really fun experience, um, you know, just fun entertainment. If it's a little bit of a chilly day, you can, they'll offer you a blanket there and some hot chocolate to warm up. And finally, the most uh, historic part of the downtown there is uh, Creek Street. So you see that in the bottom left-hand corner. It is, uh, it used to be the old red light district as a matter of fact, but these days it's a, uh, filled with cafes and um, stores and restaurants. So fun, a lot of fun stuff to do, do your shopping before heading home. One thing I wanna point out, now it's called Creek Street for a reason. It's a boardwalk over a creek. You look in the bottom left hand corner there, you see a bunch of people looking down. In the creek, there's actually five or six seals swimming around there, playing around. Uh, absolutely fun, amazing thing to see. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, but that's how close, up close and personal you get with the nature and wildlife in Alaska. One thing I really want to point out that is a differentiator for Holland America and Alaska and 
throughout our destinations throughout the world. Because of our smaller ships, we get far better um, docking destinations than many of the other cruise lines. So this is a picture of where we dock in Ketchikan and where many of the other cruise lines dock. Now with Ketchikan, there's, there's not, not a whole lot going on outside of the downtown there. It's a town of 8,000 people. There's no suburbs or any, you know, tourism uh, type of things in, in the little areas like the, uh, the cruise line port eight miles away. So when these larger cruise lines pull in there, we were actually trying to meet up with a friend of my coworkers when I visited, and it took her over an hour to get to downtown Ketchikan and over an hour to get back to the cruise ship because of the long lines and the, um, the uh, buses to take all these uh, thousands of people in and out of downtown Ketchikan. With Holland America, because we get those better docking opportunities, you can walk off the ship and be in prime spot right there. So next, you might ask why I take a cruise tour? Well, so you can see beautiful views like this. And uh, when I talk to people about Alaska, I've really only heard one regret. And that regret is that they wish they took the time to stay for a couple extra days and go see the interior of Alaska and Denali because they're so blown away by the beautiful nature and wildlife of the cruise. Um, but there's a whole different side to Alaska when you go and see the land. Now, when visiting Denali, we offer three different Denali options, and we would call that a single Denali, a double Denali, or a triple Denali cruise tour. So in front of you, I have a triple Denali. And what that means is one, two, or three nights in Denali. So I really wouldn't recommend a single Denali because basically that means one night there, you basically spend the whole day traveling to Denali, do a little overnight, and then you head back right, right on out. Uh, I would absolutely recommend doing a double or triple Denali to have more time there. In a double or triple Denali, we're going to take you into Denali National Park on the Tundra Wilderness Tour so that you can see uh, tons of beautiful wildlife and opportunity to see Denali Mountain. And then if you do a triple Denali, you're gonna have a third day just to kind of relax in the area and do some excursions there if you like as well. So when you get off the ship, we uh, featured the McKinley Explorer, excuse me, McKin McKinley Explorer is a luxury train ride that takes you directly to Denali. See beautiful views like this all around the train. These are actually the largest dome cars allowed in Alaska. They are the tallest, they're mo most spacious. We feature uh, only forward facing seats and a 360 view uh, dome, glass dome cars all around you to uh, provide the best experience and best viewing all around you. These are including all of our cruise tours and it's a fully narrated experience as well. So you're gonna have a guide um, on board the uh, train with you and they'll point out the different wildlife that you're passing, uh, tell you about a little bit of the uh, history of the area as well. Also phenomenal cuisine and food on board this train. And then finally, uh, it's very convenient luggage service. So when you get off the ship, all you need to do is put your luggage right outside your cabin door and we'll take it from there. So we'll, we'll put the uh, luggage on underneath the train cars, take it directly to Denali and you won't even have to worry about it until you find it right at your hotel room. One thing I really want to point out about our train cars. So here's some beautiful pictures that uh, one of my coworkers took. And um, you see some great scenery, some nice things. But what I really want to point out is what you don't see. And what you don't see is any glare or distortion. And that is because uh, he took these on, on board the train. And we partnered with Kodak so that we could design glass that is completely free of any uh, glare or distortion when you take pictures. Uh, through, through that, those glass domes. Now it brings us to Denali and uh, we stay at our award-winning uh, McKinley Chalet Resort. It's surrounded by 60 acres of Denali National Park. One of the best parts about uh, McKinley Chalet is De Denali Square. So you see this beautiful place in front of you, uh, tons of fun stuff to do. Uh, you see the bonfire pits on the far left. You see an area where we'll have live music playing, some great cafes and shopping. This place is so popular that, in fact, a lot of other guests from, from nearby resorts will come to hang out and spend their time in Denali Square, where you get to actually stay. So now we're getting into the second day of Denali, and uh, this is 
where we'll do the Tundra Wilderness Tour. We're going to take you uh, deep into uh, Denali National Park to give you some great opportunities to see wildlife and beautiful Denali Mountain, which is the largest mountain in all of North America. So something I want to point out with our Tundra Wilderness Tour, <clears throat> when evaluating perhaps your options on their cruise lines, some other cruise lines will say they include a tour of Denali. Well, there's a big difference in what tour that is. We include the uh, Tundra Wilderness Tour, which you can see takes you all the way into mile 41. That is as far as you can possibly go into Denali right now. It used to go a little bit further, but there was recently a landslide um, that cut off that road. So we take you as far as you can possibly go into Denali, where it shows you the best uh, wildlife opportunities and opportunities to see the mountain. Many other cruise lines only include the uh, natural history tour, which simply takes you 16 miles in with very limited opportunities to see the wildlife. While going through uh, Denali National Park, you can expect to see some phenomenal sites, some beautiful wildlife, including the moose, the caribou, doll sheep, gray wolves, and of course, the big, beautiful grizzly bear. Once you take that Tundra Wilderness tour throughout the National Park that day, get back to the resort and uh, spend some time in Denali Square, maybe listen to some great live music and some great dining there. Now, if you have to, the time to do that triple Denali, three days in Denali, um, then you'll have a time, some time to uh, relax in the area, explore the resort, or do an excursion. One of the excursions that I would definitely recommend if you're a bit of a thrill seeker is the whitewater rafting. And finally, I just want to point out as well that we uh, also offer uh, tour opportunities to the Yukon, and we are the only uh, major cruise line that actually offers tours or experiences to the Yukon. So if you have clients that are interested in the gold rush history or would like to see a little bit uh, off the beaten path type of area, there's no better place to do that than the Yukon. Uh, this is fully led by a journey host, as is the part throughout Denali, basically a tour manager that escorts you the entire time. And I mentioned we go to all seven continents, over 470 ports throughout the world. And it turns out our number one rated experience is to the Yukon. So if you're wondering about going to the Yukon, if you think it would be uh, right for you, or if you have those couple extra days to do so, I would definitely recommend experiencing the Yukon. And review why we're so well known for Alaska and why we hope you travel with us there. We are the most awarded company for Alaska, and we by far have the most experience uh, to do so. 75 years this year, and uh, before Alaska was even a state. We have far more itineraries going to Glacier Bay than any other cruise line, and those uncrowded ships are perfect for Alaska viewing. Mentioned some of those fantastic experiences inland in Denali, such as the McKinley Explorer train ride, a Tundra Wilderness tour that takes you deeper into the National Park, and that beautiful uh, award-winning resort in McKinley Chalet, and uh, we are the only ones that can take you to the Yukon. So now the last few things I wanted to share with you. Uh, also share with you some of our um, top products outside of Alaska. Now it's a little bit cold right now, and so you might be thinking of trying to get away to a warmer destination. There's no better place to do that than our uh, private island called Half Moon Key. So this is actually one top private island 20 years running now. And just about every cruise line has a private island these days. And many of them have amusement parks and water slides. And if that's what you want to go for, that is wonderful. There are definitely options out there for that. But if you're looking for an island paradise with one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, the best place for you to go is with Holland America Line to Half Moon Key. So you see some of the beautiful pictures there, white sand beach, super soft sand, uh, crystal clear water that just cascades perfectly into the ocean. Tons of fun stuff to do there as well. It is absolutely phenomenal. And just like our ships are uh, less crowded, so is our private island. At all times, we only have one ship docked at Half Moon Key. And uh, this is a very realistic picture on the right-hand side of what our private island looks like. Farther down the line to the right, you'll see some cabanas and things like that. But if you just walk a little ways down the coast, you, you'll have a totally, um, uninhibited view of the beach and uh, feel like the beach is all, all to yourself there. For Europe, when you think of Europe, I'm sure uh, you might think of Holland AmeriClean. It's in our name, it's where we came from. And next year, 2023, that will mark our 150th 
anniversary um, as well. So we've been going there for 150 years, taking people throughout Europe. Uh, we know the destinations extremely well. We can get into those smaller ports and give you a more in-depth experience throughout Europe. We have opportunities throughout the Mediterranean, like the Greek Isles, Italy, Croatia, Northern Europe, like the Baltic Sea, uh, seeing uh, Scandinavia, um, Russia, Iceland. Transatlantic is a great option if you really enjoy the cruise experience with just a handful of port stops and a long cruise across the transatlantic. One thing I want to point out about um, our cruises in general, but especially in Europe, if you have, if you want to do a back-to-back -back cruise, you've already spent all the money to airfare to get over to Europe, uh, you might as well take advantage of doing so and do a back-to-back -back cruise if you have the time to do so. And if you have a port that begins and ends at the same place, so here you see um, the cruise on the left begins and ends in Athens, and so does the one on the right. If it's in the same port and it's a back-to-back -back cruise, we call that a collector's voyage. And the thing about collector's voyage is that it presents an, a spectacular savings opportunity for you. If you do a back-to-back -back cruise like that as a collector's voyage, uh, you can save up to 10% off your overall fare. I recently had a call with our, our Europe product manager and over one fourth of our bookings in Europe are a collector's voyage. So that's a very popular feature for guests to take advantage of, save yourself some money and make, uh, make the most out of your time while you've already done airfare over there. And finally, another big product for us that our guests absolutely love is Canada and New England. Of course, Canada had their borders closed last year, but we're so thrilled to get back there in 2022. You can do a lot of great um, cruise experiences, seeing beautiful uh, Northeast, Maine, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. And with some of our smaller ships, you can even go all the way down St. Lawrence, Lawrence River to Montreal. Final thing I have for you is just how we can save you some money. So a little while ago, we introduced Have It All. This is an exciting new promotion we have. We asked our guests what they want from Holland America, what they want from us. They said uh, they want a more all-inclusive style of cruise. And our answer for that is Have It All. So we're including shore excursions, drink package, specialty dining, and Wi-Fi for actually more than 50% off. All of this together used to be about $100 per person per day. Now with Have It All, uh, we're giving that away at just $45 per person per day. That's less than just the drink packages. So it's a phenomenal value, a really uh, inclusive style of cruise for you. And here's a little bit more of a in-depth look at, at what that is. Um, so a six to nine day cruise, you'll get a $100 short excursion credit. You'll get the signature beverage package, a specialty dining and Wi-Fi included. And then the longer your cruise, uh, the more perks you get. So uh, 10 to 20 day cruise, you're gonna get two short excursion credits and two spe specialty dinings. Uh, 21 days or longer, you get three excursion credits and three specialty dinings. Again, phenomenal value, definitely encourage you to take advantage of it. And uh, we are in the midst of something we call wave season. It's a very uh, popular time for people to book. Of course, here we are in winter and um, uh, people want to get out, get out of this cold weather. And so throughout this season, we're offering something called the Ultimate Upgrade Event. And it's just tremendous value, especially um, if you're looking at Alaska as well. So throughout the end of this um, month, through February 28th, when you book a cruise with us and you book that have it all package, like I just mentioned, we're going to give you an automatic free stateroom upgrade. If you book inside, we'll bump you up to an ocean view. Ocean View will move you up to a veranda. So fantastic value there. If you have kids you'd like to travel with, if they are the third and fourth guest in your cabin, they can cruise for just uh, $75 if they're at age 17 or younger. We're offering 50% reduced deposits. And through the end of the month, we're also offering um, the free, excuse me, the White Pass Railway excursion. It's our most popular excursion in Alaska. And uh, that's valued at about $140 if you book with us uh, by the end of the month. So some great savings for you as well. So that's all I have for you. The last thing I just really wanna emphasize is that um, there's really never been a more uh, difficult time to travel than right now with all the different protocols for the cruise lines, for the destinations, with COVID and everything, things are changing on a daily and weekly basis. 
So the last thing you want to do is try to uh, handle these, these uh, arrangements on your own. And Travel Leaders has the very best uh, travel agents you're going to find. They're phenomenal, they're experienced, um, and they're going to give you the best value and the best experience for you. So uh, make sure to book an appointment with your travel agent and uh, they'll, they'll be glad to take care of you from there. So thank you so much for the time, Nora. And uh, yeah. are there any, any questions? I don't see any questions in the chat yet, but if anyone has them, go ahead and put it in. Thank you, Scott, for your time and such great information. The images were gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, I don't see any questions yet, but um, I will stay online for just a couple more minutes if you're available, Scott. Certainly. And, um, we'll be able to answer any questions anyone has. Uh, you can call our office at any time, 763-231-8870, and one of our advisors would be happy to help you.